Three, two, one. Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative, Synergy Lifestyle Academy, and I've got Andrew, and his last name is Shatkin. You there, Andrew? Right. That's me. Dun, dun, dun. Are you I'm on very the... happy you let me on this show. What the heck? Why not? You know? Right. <laughs> I think you're the kind of person, the host, that would be very flexible. Well, I'm, a, I'm a, like a, a neutralist, if you will. Right. It's kind of like, in my opinion, most, um, most truths change with experience or an atmosphere or environment. Yeah, I think so, yeah. You know, like, um, I use an analogy of, like, what's got more value, a $100 bill or a glass of water? Right. That depends on if you're in the desert or not, you know? Right, that's right. <laughs> so I, I find that people's opinions change. You know, the, the majority of the people that I talk with end up being, like, business marketers and things. And I think a lot of people that mm -hmm. get into business, they think that there's, mm -hmm. like, a straight path from uh, starting to making a bunch of money. And it never works that way. Nothing ever does. You can't really Doesn't? track everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I think actually she made a good point, Brad, that – each of us, as we live our years and we experience more, and our thinking changes. Absolutely. It does. It does. It does change. We become more, we're not as um, narrow-minded, I don't think. When you're younger, you think you have all the answers and they're yeah. on one line. But when you get older, you see a variety of viewpoints. And some things become not all that important. Some things right. are important and some things are like, you know, a lot of things are really not important at all. Exactly. It's like, uh, sometimes when we, we travel, my, I'll miss a, uh, exit ramp or something to get mm -hmm. onto another place to travel somewhere mm -hmm. on the road. And my wife gets, Oh no, we missed it. It doesn't matter if you got a full tank of gas, just keep going. Turn around. That's right. No big deal. Well, I'll tell you, uh, there are many pe there are people out there, Brad, you probably know this, I, I don't feel that way because I'm, you know, we each of us mature in our own way at our own rate. I don't really make an issue about somebody slipping up or a mistake or a, a word I don't like or an opinion I don't like. They have an opinion. I say, fine. I'm listening to it. I don't reject. I don't feel diminished by any other person who disagrees with me. It's fine. Well, there's that old agree to disagree thing. Some people don't want that's that. Right. They want you to follow their path and everybody's got different paths. Just You might as well listen to the person. They could have a very valid point that I have not really seen what the way clearly to, to grasp. That person has seen things or grasped something that well, they can afford me. I got my start in this business world as a magician, a performing magician. Right. So magic is all about perception. You know, just because the lady gets cut in half in the box doesn't mean she's cut in half. It's a perceived, mm. you know, so the perception of everything, you might be having, uh, like, Trump is an asshole. He's an asshole. Well, a lot of people always. don't like Trump. I like Trump, but a lot of people don't like him. To me, it goes either way. It depends on, I mean, if I'm in a corner and I'm being gunned, uh, you know, attacked and Trump comes along and, and saves me, that's kind of a good thing. You know, right. <laughs> so I don't, I don't care. He's just president. He's doing what he does. Right. Well, as I say, a lot of people have this, have this antipathy to Trump. What's that word? They, it's What's politics, it? you know. Antipathy. Politics is emotions. He's not really rational. I don't think a political position necessarily. It emanates from your family and your, your background. Uh, so that's, I think, is the way it works, you know. Mm -hmm. When I look at politics, I, I think of polarity. It's that's basically right. way left or way right, or the North Pole or the South Pole, like on a magnet. And that's it, right. you got to kind of work your way into the middle. I like to walk the fence. Some people say there are no fence sitters. Mm. But I, I kind of, it depends. You know, things change. Oh, you got to. Hold on, let me hang up the phone. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. That happens. We could have been getting an important phone call from somebody. No, I was on my phone with a friend of mine uh, before this broadcast. <laughs> okay. So I saw in some of your information that you're a writer and an, an educator. Is that? Is that yes, case? I'm a writer. I've written several books and many blogs. 
They're available on my website at academia.edu. And as I say, I mean, yes, I am a supporter, and to some extent, the president's policies, uh, particularly on illegal immigration, I, I'm quite honest with you, Brad, I don't want to sound like controversial or mean, but I can't see a person coming here illegally, not being allowed to be here. Sorry. Well, so it's, it's a weird thing. I know that there's people that say, you got to let in the immigrants. Well, if I'm they sorry, go, they, like, they're not immigrants. They're coming here illegally. That's what I'm saying. You got to let them in. They, they don't know that they are. They are not to be let in. If they come through legal avenues, they can come. That's my opinion. Well, I, mean, it makes I sense. can't see it that a person who comes here and violates the law should be allowed to get away with it. I Sorry. look at it as, um, you know, our country is the, ma the macrocosm. Your house might be the microcosm. Are you just going to let people walk into your house because they feel like it? Well, that's it. They got to be uh, vetted a little bit. That's my they... opinion. I know it's the, the left will say, call them immigrants. They are not immigrants. They are people who are illegally coming here when there are legal avenues to do so. Right. Yep, I'm, I'm in agreement. Also, let me tell you something, Brad, they know it. They know sure. there's legal avenues to come. And they, they're, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're manipulating their way into the society. Well, people are like electricity. They take the path of least resistance. But exactly. They've been <laughs> allowed to get away with it for some years. But Trump rightly has addressed the issue. Mm -hmm. I understand they're very angry about with Trump and uh, with his uh, deporting them. Well, some are, some aren't. Maybe some of them just realize that, you know what, I did, I, I broke the law, I came across, I shouldn't have done it that way. But I can also see, like, I was somewhat of an expatriate for a while. I wanted to mm. move to Bali, Indonesia, because it's so nice and peaceful there. Right. But to do that, I would have to go through, I'd have a passport, and I have to check in, and I'm a, I'm a visitor with a visa. Well, that's time. it. It takes some time to become a citizen, and I need to learn the language, need to learn the culture, right. and start acting the way that, that Balinese act. It's just respectful. It's like if I walked into your house and I started throwing things around like an idiot, you probably wouldn't want me there. Well, that's it. You make a good point. To come here uh, illegally and claim the right to be here, you are uh, you're making uh, you're making a fool of people. Well, you're an invader. <laughs> I mean, as I say, I, my point is, Brad. You may disagree with it. They know it. Sure. The people who do this. Well, a lot of people do things they're not supposed to do and they know it. I mean, I roll through stop signs all the time and I go over the speed limit all if the time. If I don't pay my taxes, Brad, I will soon find out what's going to happen to me. They're going to take my bank account if yeah. they want to. They're going to take my where I live if they want to. I know that. Yeah. That's why I pay my taxes. Yeah, we got so that won't we got happen. Ones. And there are loopholes so you don't have to pay as many taxes if you're self-employed. But as I say, I mean, um, I am not about to be fooled by some kind of rhetoric. What, what, what uh, also, rhetoric? I have to say that there are the are are there are many poor black not all black people are poor. Probably a lot of them are rich. I don't know, but there are many Americans, black Oprah's Latino, doing who need jobs. And the idea that they should be they, that this group should have the right to medical care, a job, a, a education. I can't see it. Yeah, I can, I, can, I can see where a person starts thinking that way because they got a kind heart and they want to bring people in and help them. them and Are they being them, kind to you coming here illegally? Is that very kind? Well, maybe they're just, maybe they did it kind. They kind of climbed. Are they, the is that very mountain. nice? You think it's very nice to walk in a place illegally? and then try to, to manipulate your way into getting rights that you're not entitled to? Is that very nice? I well, think it's very nice. Well, let's bring it back to the home. If someone walked up to your house and said, excuse me, I really have to go to the bathroom, maybe really bad, knock, knock, knock. Could I, could I use your restroom? I'll only be there. Both. I don't think you can do that. You wouldn't you let them in? You can't let a stranger into your house. No. You, well, you could. <laughs> well, you, but you don't know that person. Yeah, they may not to, really need to use the I, bathroom. They I may agree. want to ransack your house. I agree, but looking at the the light side, maybe they do just want to use the restroom. Well, maybe the that would direction. be very. If you were a homeowner with a family, that would be extremely risky. Yeah, in this in this day and age, absolutely. But there used to be. I wouldn't let anybody in. into my into my house that I didn't know. No. I understand. I, I lock my doors. Would you do that? 
Let well, someone walk in your house? Again, it would depend on the circumstances. You know, if the, if the person is like all bloody and busted up, they need some help and stuff, maybe I might. There are emergency rooms yeah. where they can go to a hospital. Yeah, but there are my, police that will transport them to a hospital. That's true, but my kind There are hearted, facilities to take care of people. I agree, but my kind heartedness might allow that to happen. Another they, the question is, are they, in doing this, being very kind to you? Maybe not. No. Well, maybe they're in a neutral place where they got beat up or something and they're in need. They're, they need some help. But as I say, there are emergency rooms. So you just there ignore them? There are police stations. There are EMS. There's all kinds of things. Oh. Nobody in this country has to be treated in that fashion. We are a very, very advanced society. So and is, if a person is sick, they will be taken care of. Okay, but say it's like 11.30 at night and there's nobody immediately around. You can't let him in your house, Brad, I'm sorry. It's too bad. Maybe I'll be look as a Scrooge or a, an ogre or something, but I just can't see. You can't let him in your house. Well, that's all just personal choice. You know, if someone feels they could, then they could. If they don't want to, then they don't have to. I mean, there's nothing saying that you have to well, let people, because I am, happening. I am a lawyer, and I say this, uh, knowing what people are capable of and knowing what is beneath the surface that you may not be aware of, I wouldn't let them in. No. I can hear you're very cautious in that realm. And uh, well, you, well, you know very well what people are capable of, Brad. I do. If you don't know them. But I, but I also understand they're capable on the good side, too. But you have to know that. You can't know that. Well, you don't have to necessarily know it. You can just uh, be cautious and have some discernment and, and be prepared if that guy is a lunatic. Maybe you let him in and you got a gun in their face. Well, all I can say is based on my knowledge of having lived some years, I don't think that I would let someone into my house I didn't know, no. Well, that's, uh, that's understandable. And that's why we have borders in our country. <laughs> right. <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, the idea, is, as I said, um, it looks like it's a matter of kindness, but that's not the issue. The issue is manipulation. Are you being manipulated to let someone in? Are you being fooled to let someone in? Are you being, are you being misled to let someone in? Yep, you don't know. There's, there's definitely a lot of that. There's people that, that work their way through. And what are those people that are, that are fleeing another country or whatever, and they want to, what, are they, what is that terminology called? Well, I, I, look, I know that people will say to me when I say this, that I'm some kind of a bad guy or a mean, a mean person. But whether they're fleeing or not, um, first of all, if a person is fleeing from another country, they can go to the US Embassy, and apply for I agree legally I agree. I agree they don't they but they do not have the right I don't I don't say first of all they may be fleeing they may not be fleeing they could be lying yeah they could I mean so uh, as I say there the issue is are you going to allow people to get in not using legal avenues when legal avenues there's an embassy there where you I can agree. make your application. I agree. You should take proper, it's, it's kind of I'm using another analogy. I mean, you can either just, uh, you could jump the fence or dig under the fence, or you can use the right way and go through the embassy and using the analogy of the house, you can walk through the door with permission or you can That's bust right. through a window in the back. Well, garage. as you said, Brad, the, the path of least resistance, the illegal route, is a tremendously easier. It is. It's faster, yeah. it's easier, it's uh, more risky. <laughs> but it's a lot easier. Yeah, I understand. Could you speak a, a little of... louder? I'm having trouble hearing you. you got my little microphone here. You okay, got great. Volume all the way up. Can you hear me? Right. Okay, great. Maybe I, I can move this problem up here. with our with our political system. I have, to a certain extent on this issue, I might be identified as a conservative, but really I'm not a conservative. I'm a person who looks at the facts and weighs them. And 
as I say, uh, I do not think, as you say, that a person is particularly nice or deserves kindness who walk in here in gross and absolute defiant of our legal system. I don't think that's nice. I don't think that person's any good. And I think they should be removed immediately. Yep, I hear that because they are taking the path of illegal entrance. So you but they're no good. They could come here legally. Yes, they could come here legally. I'm in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to be fooled. I'll tell you one time, Brad, I have a relative. I know the women, and I, look, I like the girls as much as anybody, but they have a different way of thinking in this respect. I know that a female relative of mine had a, a person who cleaned, and that person was here illegally. And this lady said to me, my friend, my relative, that um, she, thought, she thought this person was very nice. Now, I'm sorry. That person who's come here illegally is not very nice. I don't find that very nice. Right. Coming here illegally and taking a job. That is not, that is not, she said, and she liked her a lot. She was very nice. I guess she was pleasant enough to her. I mean, they, they were friend, had friendly terms, but I don't see that person as very nice. Well, the way that um, males and females operate, in my opinion, it's kind of like an analog digital kind of thing. Males are very logical and digital. Yeah, guys are very, they look at the facts. They look at it a lot. Women the look females at Females are more feelings. nurturing and yeah, yeah. they yeah, do. So that's why. But I, as I said, I said to her, I, I'm sorry, I don't think a person who is coming to your apartment with an, an illegal status, I don't call that nice. I understand. <laughs> but she does, as you say, women see it different. Well, again, I'm in the middle of the road and I look on both sides and I kind of wonder, okay, what is this person? Maybe I can help them figure out how to become here illegally and maybe I could take them back to wherever they came from and, and help them to get across if I want to be helping. But there are rules, regulations and laws and circumstances and lines and, and you do have to abide by that. But we all kind of slip. Do you, do you stop at all stop signs when you're driving? Yeah, well, I mean, if there's a stop sign, I have at times 100%. passed a little bit through the curb, and I got a ticket. But you you, you roll through the stop sign, maybe? You no, it was I, I simply went a little bit beyond the corner where it was, like halfway into the street. Into the crosswalk. I got yep. a ticket. And then driving, uh, 65 miles driving, an hour, yeah. do you go 66? I mean, I got a ticket. But I deserve, I'll be honest with you, Brad, I'm not about to fudge this. I... I passed the stop sign. So I, I deservedly got a ticket. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, that's, as I, said, I, I, I use the same kind of thinking about myself and my failings as I do about the person who walks in here legally. There's no right. difference. So that person I got the ticket. In, they they be, will be removed. Yep, I agree. But if a person is, uh, drives over 65 miles an hour in a 65 mile an hour lane, they're wrong. They're breaking the law. They're they are. It. Well, that's too bad, because we all we all take we all take the risk. If you do drive in excess of the speed limit, they can clock it. The police, mm -hmm. and you get stopped. But yeah. you, since I well know, although I may not be paying attention, that's that's one factor. I could not be paying. I might not be paying attention. You know, that's a factor. Right. I don't think that's an excuse. Well, I agree. When someone's crossing the border, they're probably pretty, they, they, they know they're not supposed to be doing that. Yeah, that's right. They do. <laughs> most, of, most of us, most of us, the bottom line, know when we are doing something in violation of the law or morally wrong. Yeah. You could even extend it to that, whatever you want to define as, as moral. Uh, let's let's uh, shift to another topic. I can't do these too long, but I want to okay. shift to another topic and then we'll close it off and maybe ask some questions on how people can okay. uh, get your books and such. But let's talk about the whole concept of peaceful protesting versus lighting something on fire and looting and, and knocking things over. So what's your like, to me, peaceful protesting is peaceful. 
It's right. not megaphones and it's not yelling and screaming and using the F word and shouting at people. Right. It's peaceful protesting. I've, I've been to Bali, Indonesia a couple of times. It's the most peaceful place I've ever been on the planet. Uh -huh. It's not like that when you go to these protests and people are screaming and yelling at each other. That doesn't seem peaceful to me. And then when you throw a Molotov cocktail in a building and start breaking windows, that's a whole nother group of people, don't you think? I agree. I don't, I don't think the kind of violent, uh, those kind of protests should be allowed and the person really, uh, they should be arrested. Yeah, and they try to arrest them, but then there's people that are saying that it's justified because they're angry. Right. <laughs> but again, <laughs> once again, they're doing that knowing it's wrong. Exactly. They so, do know. So not, nobody's going to fool me to think that person doesn't know what they're doing. Exactly. They walk in and take out a big screen TV and two people carrying it. They know what they're right. doing. It's true. <laughs> well. Would you like to talk? I had a couple of topics on my mind that I have a few, maybe you have a few minutes. Sure. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's hear something. The Supreme Court is going to decide whether to uphold Roe v. Wade, which is the abortion issue. Personally, I don't, when I, when I say I'm anti uh, abortion. I'm saying that based on my reasonable analysis of the situation. I don't think a woman can be forced to have a baby, no. But I'm not prepared to concede the point that to take another life is murder. Sorry. I mean, if you don't like it, my, my opinion, that's fine. But I think it's taking someone's life. It could be you, it could be your kid, it could be anybody. The main victims murder? of abortion are black soul Latinos, the poorer classes of society. You're saying it's not is their life is are their lives less of value than yours or mine? No. <laughs> so okay. that's why I'm against abortion. I, I think it's murder. Um, I agree. I think I think conception happens as soon as you think about it. If you think it gets, about it, yeah. As soon as and it I, gets it really it. bothers me that the academic system I said one time I'm active I'm active in the anti abortion movement. And I saw a video where uh, some anti-abortion group went down to George Washington University and held up signs. This got the, these signs got the young women very angry, extremely angry. They were yelling and screaming, cursing, and the sign said abortion is a sin and murder. Well, I'll tell you, when they saw that, when those young women saw that, they went hysteria in being told that but that's too bad nobody likes to be told the truth do they well, nothing, because, nothing more than bothers people than to say something that's true no i think it is absolutely true i know there is that issue they the that um the right to do with my own body what i choose that's your body it's not the body of the fetus it's your body you can do what you want with not the unborn baby there was another decision of the supreme court i want to close it with this and I don't think that gay people or transgender people should be discriminated against. I mean, that's a starting point. I don't think anybody should be discriminated against. I think they, people should be left to their own devices and their choices in this respect. Sure. So I have no issue with transgender people or, 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 or homosexual people not being discriminated against. But the decision says where I differed from it, and I, I maintain this position, that it, it was a sexual discrimination statute they decided on. And I took the position, I wrote a blog on it, that unfortunately, homosexual activity and transgender activity, in my opinion, I'm taking an honest view of it, Brad, is not sexual. Sorry. No scientists, if you'll notice, scientists don't lie it's like politicians, <laughs> not as much. They don't stick their neck out in some kind of publication and lie about something. None of them have said that homosexuality or transgenderism is sex. Now, one of them has gone that far. So I, th I don't think you should be discriminated against. When, when you say sex, other hand, you mean, when you I, I, don't say, think th I don't think it's sex. When you say sex, do you mean gender? Male, female? Well, I don't think it's a sexuality or gender issue. I think it's a, I don't know what, the, I don't know why they do this. It's not my business. I have nothing against them. They're perfectly decent citizens. But the fact of the matter is that um, no scientist has 
stuck his neck out to say that this is a sexual function. I don't think it is. I can't say what it is. I'm not competent to decide why people do things with their body or not. But I don't think it's sex. It's just my personal opinion. Gender. It is not organic, okay? Yeah. It's not connected with, it is, it is, I can't say what it is. It could be choice, unfortunately. A person's choice. They like it. They derive pleasure from it. It's choice. Or it's, it's psycho, psychological. But I don't think it's physical. No. Well, again, when you take stuff and you go the polarity route, you've got this the very strong masculine male energy, and then you've got the female energy. And you can have a man that has a soft side to him, and then he gets softer yeah, and softer. There's and softer as much softer variation softer softer in the human fashion version. Of course, there are soft spoken uh, feminine men, and there are, as, as you say, uh, I can't, <laughs> you live long enough, you know this, there's plenty of masculine women. Exactly. <laughs> There are quite a few. There are. And then it gets uh, to right. a, a place where all of a sudden you say, even though I've got a penis, I decided I want to be a woman. Or even though I've got a vagina, I get to a certain place and say, I now want to be a man. You kind of can't. You can create well, the surgery. I think that person's, doesn't I, I have nothing against people of varying uh, lifestyles. They're, it's a free country. They're allowed to do what they want in this respect. I have no argument with it, but I just have reached the irrational conclusion that the idea that they have claimed it's a physical organic issue, I, don't, I think it's a lie. Sorry. I hear you. <laughs> okay. I hear you. There are definitions, you know, there is, a, you know, white is black and or white is white and black is black and up is up and down is down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the facts are the facts. Some well, people, some right people, right. as you say, I, I maintain this position, you probably know, there's nothing that bothers a people more than being told the truth. There is nothing more dangerous. I don't know. I know that, the, well, to me, I mean, we could go into a whole other conversation about that, but I only find one truth, and that is that I am. Everything else is just perception and opinion and belief of whatever. Well, I'm not asking you to agree with me, Brad. I respect your views. You know, if they differ from me, I have no issue with it. But mm -hmm. that's my personal opinion. Everybody's got one. Right. That's true. <laughs> All right. That was a good show. Well, Andrew, this was fun. Yeah, it was I good. I will get it uh, set up and I will email you over a copy so you have one. For okay, yourself. great. And if you want to, I have a podcast show. You can come on it. Sure, that'd be fun. I, you send I'll me send the, you an email. The, the deal on that, reply to this. I really enjoy it. Okay, I, th okay. I thought it was a really lively conversation we had, you know? It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> okay, have a good right, day. Andrew. Thank you. Peace. Bye.